This is What The Flux. I'm Brett. And I'm Justin. And it's Wednesday, the 8th of September. Oh, Jazzy boy, gone are the days of the 40-hour work week, mm-hmm. my friend. Scotland is set to trial a four-day working week. And the best part is there will be no salary cut. I like it. Now, parts of New Zealand, Iceland and Japan have all taken the plunge and reported pretty great results. Bring it to Australia. Maybe. Brett, new research from Cancer shows 42% of Aussies have delayed big financial decisions. We're talking buying or selling property, paying bills or changing jobs. Mm. And it's all because of, no surprises here, yep. COVID and lockdown. Three frugal stories today, Justin. <laughs> Let's do it. For our first, Foxtel has launched a new set-top box, which it is calling the ultimate streaming machine. Welcome to the 21st century, Foxtel. What is the story? <laughs> well, we all know Foxtel as the big pay TV company. It was kind of like the Netflix before Netflix. I'm thinking Simpsons Marathon. Friends reruns. Law and Order around the clock. <laughs> and it launched around 25 years ago and is majority owned by News Corp. And while Foxtel was the epitome of cool in 2009, (laughs) it's kind of become the daggy dad in recent years. And it's an absolute B to install. Getting a Foxtel installation person takes anywhere between three months to three years (laughs) to arrive. (laughs) And now they're taking a massive leap forward by launching the IQ5. Which uh, is... It's the first ever set-top box that doesn't require a satellite dish or cable installation. So that you'll be able to start streaming Foxtel in minutes. And it means Foxtel might be slowly shedding its daggy dad image. (laughs) If only ScoMo could do the same. (laughs) So what's the key learning here? Sometimes when a business is bleeding cash, Mm -hmm. losing customers, losing its brand, it really needs to start again from scratch. It's a bold move, but often necessary to reinvent themselves. And Justin Foxtel is essentially starting itself from scratch. It's going back to basics using a little thing called first principles. Ah yes, the old first principles thinking is an approach used by tons of inventors, all the way from Aristotle to Elon Musk. And what actually is it? Essentially, it's the act of boiling down a process into the fundamental parts. And then building it back up from there. For Foxtel, they know they're good at delivering entertaining content. But the delivery of that content? I.e. through a satellite and cables at $60 (laughs) per month. Yep, it's just not suitable for customers anymore. So Foxtel is doing what it does best, entertainment, but in new ways. Like its streaming service, KO and Binge. And now the non-satellite set-top box. For our second story, Mercedes-Benz has revealed its new electric vehicles as it plans to electrify its entire lineup by 2022. I think it was a missed opportunity to not have ACDC's Thunder (laughs) playing the background on this one. Justin, what's the story? All right, Mercedes-Benz has just revealed a whole new lineup of cars and it's got one big thing in common. They're all electrified. And yes, we saw the concept plans for its electric G-Wagon, Flux fam. (laughs) Some background on the G-Wagon first. This baby costs upwards of $230,000. Yes, that's nearly six times the average car cost here in Australia. And it's been a pretty big status symbol around the world too. Post Malone even rapped about it. And the new electric version is all part of the car maker's plan to go fully electric by what? 2022? So what's the key learning here? As demand for electric cars surges, established car manufacturers are seriously thinking about how to give customers the same level of luxury Mm -hmm. and class, but in a sustainable way. We're talking a Lamborghini. Perhaps a Hummer. Rolls Royce, McLaren. And now Mercedes-Benz. Benz. They're all rewriting their business models to meet emissions targets and new government regulations. We all know that combustion engines are going down. <laughs> They're going majorly <laughs> down. And the UK, Sweden, India, Israel, Germany, they've all planned to ban the sale of these type of engines by 2030. Which means luxury car makers are racing to replace their gasoline and diesel models with batteries. Mm. For our third and final story, PayPal has signaled that it may launch a stock trading platform. Huge. Could be a sign of things to come in Australia, Justin. What's the story? All right. Well, PayPal is the $340 billion US payments company. Yep. They're known for helping buyers make safe, secure payments on the old internet. And of course, remembering my details so I don't <laughs> need to buy my credit card every time I make a purchase, which is often. Yep. They're the real MVP here. <laughs> now, Brett, PayPal was actually one of the OG companies started by Elon Musk. Before he decided to take over the universe. <laughs> now, PayPal's apparently exploring a possible stock trading platform for US customers for now. And this isn't super surprising, Justin. Mm-mm. They've already rolled out the ability to trade crypto last year. And it brought in a new buy now, pay later option. So it's always the forefront of new tech in the payment space. So what's the key learning here? Trading platforms are the new black, FluxFam. Yep, the retail trading space is seeing a ton of activity. First time traders in Australia alone has hit a massive 435,000 people. And now the number of active online investors is at a record high of 1.25 million. Trading platforms are really hot right now. Indeed, it's a 
movement that started overseas thanks to a not-so-little platform named Robinhood. And they started a complete trading revolution. And now, look at what you got. We've got eToro. We've got Sharesies. Superhero. And we've got way, way more. So, Jazzy Boy, although a PayPal trading platform would come at a pretty competitive time in the industry, we've learnt never to doubt them and their 400 million Ooh. customers globally. But it could be another way to keep users in the PayPal ecosystem. Mm. Flux family, three lucky humans walking away with $100 cash each because they won Win the Week this week. We've got Johnny from Victoria. Anita from New South Wales. And Jacob from Queensland. A good spread, Brett. And why are they taking home 100 bucks cash, Justin? They saved 25 bucks this week and got into the draw to win $250,000 and guaranteed cash prizes. Download the Flux app and you could walk away with yummy cash this week. Thanks for listening and we'll see you tomorrow.